Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Florencio Files. We are going to be watching Florencio on his Mechatron account, one of the cheesiest Terran players in the world. That's right, he's been playing Terran, Zerg, and Protoss. Started off as a Protoss cheeser, as they tend to, but uh, has still got so many of these cheeky Terran plays. He's going to be playing Terran versus Zerg versus Roy Gogo today. Roy Gogo here on Berlingrad in the top left. No doubt not having any idea what's in store for him. Now, interestingly, this SCV, umming and ahhing, does not want to get spotted by the Overlord. So Florencio being very cheeky, but he did take quite a detour. So it's going to take him a while to get over there. Um, I believe this guy's name is Shitstain Steve, by the way. I'm, I'm pretty certain an SCV is trying to proxy behind someone's expansion, which, yeah, that is indeed what he's trying to do. Shitstain Steve is going to try and proxy a barrack spot here, back here. But the Overlord of Roy Gogo. Oh, the Overlord's actually really diligent. Goes and sits right over the hatchery. Roy immediately spots it. Is he going to pull drones to defend this? That barracks has just started, so there's a solid 30 seconds to take it down. And Roy, with a beautiful maneuver, pulling three drones. Shitstain Steve is unfortunately going to relive his days in school when people first found out about his shitstains when they were getting changed for PE class. And that's going to be a bit of a bummer for him, pun not intended. Uh, as he does indeed get nibbled down, uh, drones not too picky, they do manage to just chop his butt to pieces. Barracks gets cancelled, Florencio off to a horrendous start, he's going to drop a second gas. Had another barracks going down behind this, but this is a really rough start for Flo. Up against Roy, who's just going to go straight for a third base. Roy's like, cool, shut down your barracks, might as well just take a third base here. As skip the Overlord as well, so this is a very clean build for Roy. Oh man. Oh, Roy's like, yeah, dude, you can't even send a Reaper across the map at a normal time because I, I literally cancelled your first barracks. So I can just drone, take a third base. Roy is at a solid 165 APM as well. And this is something I'm seeing more and more in Flo's games is Florencio has been playing against people who are insanely high level. He's been playing against people who are like 10 times faster than him. I don't even know how Flo has 90 APM, to be honest, because we know he doesn't really use many control groups or anything like that. He's got one orbital on a control group, nothing else. Interestingly, he did make it into an orbital immediately and drop a mule, which is like 10 out of 10 macro, but he's already forgot to build SCVs despite floating 300 minerals. So Florencio is still doing Florencio things, does decide to queue up a few SCVs there. He's just going to try and expand behind this, float that one down, and a very delayed Reaper will be coming across this map. Now, Roy is going to have two queens popping out in just a few seconds, so not much of a window of opportunity. And uh, we'll see if this Reaper, <clears throat> Reginald the Reaper is going to come in, see if he can get revenge for Shitstain Steve. Does get a Creep Tumor. Not a bad start. It does slow down the Zerg's Creep Spread. Throws a grenade just to bounce that queen around. And he should be able to see that third base coming up really fast. Ferencio knows he is up against a very big macro lad as he goes for a double factory transition. Ah, uh, this is going to be rough. Oh, you know what? Triple factory. Why not? Also an engineering bay. Now we know what the engineering bay is for, guys. Unlike Silver League players, Florencio does not get the engineering bay to start plus one bio weapons for his marines that he's not going to build while building tanks and hellions and thors. It's of course for the planetary fortress. It is a very, very prominent move. I would say in gold and platinum league, somehow Florencio takes it into diamond and beyond. And I gotta say, dude, he is the master of annoying his opponent until they get frustrated and end up actually attacking into those planetary fortresses. I feel like 80% of Florencio's strategies with Terran is build sick defensive fortifications and then just piss your opponent off. You know, he really is the French guys out of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. He's just standing on the wall, basically hurling insults and just waiting for his opponent's mentality to crack and for them to come charging in. Reginald the Reaper already, while running around, killing these creep tumors, picking off the Zergling, being annoying. You know he was hurling insults. He's like, oh, you're so ugly. You bunch of dirty, slimy bugs. What's wrong with you? You guys suck. Um, to be fair, not the best insult against these queens, since that is the simulant Zerg skin. So that is a robot queen. As you can see, she's got articulated joints and all the rest. But the hatchery is a normal one. The drones also actually the simulant skins. Damn. Are we using the whole simulant skin set except the buildings, perhaps? Ah, uh, that is my favorite skin set. Roach Warren is on the way. Florencio lands his natural. And he's going to go for that planetary fortress. So, guys, it's the triple factory mass hellion. Um, now, you might be like, well, why would you go triple factory? Now, remember, guys, you could, since the barracks is not doing anything, have just built a reactor and then lifted the fa factory, landed it on it, and it would immediately be able to be building two hellions at a time. And it would have only cost you an extra 50 minerals, 50 gas, as opposed to a factory, which is 150, 100. So, instead, Florencio has done it this way, guys, because... Science says that if you have to lift things up and then land them, it's unnecessary expenditure of energy. So 
Florencio has this whole rule of swapping add-ons is for tryhards and cucks, and he only builds add-ons for the building. He doesn't like sharing. I think it may have also come in after the pandemic times. It may be part of the uh, no sharing, you know, you don't want to be sharing meals, drinking out of your friend's cup anymore. No sharing germs. So Florencio also, being very responsible, has taken that to his add-ons. No add-on sharing between buildings. Doesn't want to be sharing the saliva, nor the reactors or tech labs. Now, Hellions are going to come in. The Queens are pretty ready. And the Zerglings are in the back, so if he tries to run in, those Zerglings could go for it, but they're, they're very clumped right now, those Zerglings. And, oh, they do get a good wrap around though. Florencio's getting a couple drones, but not that many. And the Zerglings do pretty well until the final bit. Looks like eight workers go down, so he does get a bit of damage. You gotta remember though, this is still a three base Zerg with drones on the third. Roach is coming out now, so he's not gonna get any follow-up damage. And he's still only on two base, and does not have the gases on the natural yet. We can see there he's gonna take one gas geyser on that natural. He does have a tech lab, but he's still just making Hellions and nothing else. Florencio's economy, massively behind against a Zerg who's getting the lair. Getting plus one range. Going up to four gases, five gases in fact. Fourth base on the way. Has one, two, two active creep tumors. Decent queen count. I mean, this is looking like a Zerg that, yeah, has surpassed 200 APM. Is kind of hitting all their macro beats. Has good overlord spacing on the map. The one thing I guess is, does the Zerg use control groups? And the answer is no. So this Zerg does not have any army control groups, and these Zergs usually do tend to have worse map control, right? Because they're just not good at splitting their army up as well. So maybe that'll come back to bite him in the butt. It's just right now, Florencio doesn't really have any switches going on in this attack. He's making blue flame. That's only going to help you against Zerglings and drones, not against the roaches that are coming out. He's building a single cyclone, but one cyclone is not going to deal with heavy roaches. We see a fourth gas being taken. Three SCVs just chilling out front. I do not know what they are doing. But who knows, man, when you're in Florencio's army, it really does feel like you're just in one of these corporations where you just like the leadership has no idea what's going on. If you're a grunt, if you're a lowly worker, a frontline soldier or uh, or harvester in his army, like you're just getting orders all the time that are like, um, go and 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 and, and draw a love heart uh, with your footsteps on the map. And you're just like, what? why are we doing this again? But the thing is, I mean, it's not your job to understand. They've said, look, we've been told to stand there and take in the scenery. We're bloody well going to do it, aren't we? We're bloody well going to do it. Okay, look at this, guys. Ooh, we've got Stiffy the Cyclone here. Stiffy the Cyclone does come in, and he's actually clearing up. I think this is the third or fourth Overlord on the map that he's killed. So that's not bad. Kills three Overlords and is adding a bit of that ranged firepower. This is pushing back the map vision. Remember I said Roy Gogo's map vision was only really there from Overlords, and now it's all gone. So Florencio goes for a bit of a switch around. Roy will swap, spot it here. His army's a little behind though. And that's a queen off creep that gets caught out. Florencio behind this is gonna add Magfield. He's got more tech labs, so he's going triple Cyclone. He is gonna go for full on battle mech Cyclone Hellion, but oh, his army could get trapped here really, really badly. Good pullbacks by Flo. Only loses a Hellion or two. Not too bad. He's still got to get out of here, though. Dude, run up the ramp. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Florencio. Run, bro. Okay, loses quite a few units on the retreat. Uh, about four or five Hellions go down in total. The Lings are still there. They get a Reaper, and they're going to maybe get a Cyclone as well. Flo has got to get back to that planetary now. We know a lot of Zergs get frustrated and chase into the planetary, but Roy here, showing great patience, is floating a bit of money. But it's up at 72 workers and it's adding an infestation pit. It has a macro hatchery. Roach speed is finished. An infestation pit and a spire both go down. Florencio, though, avoids the army. He says, you know what? You can't really break a planetary unless you have a giant army. Let's go for a run by. So he's going to run in this top side, find some more queen pickoffs. You can see only one cyclone will automatically lock onto a queen. But that is enough to take it down pretty quickly, nonetheless. He could lock onto the hatchery. He's got five cyclones here, but that would require manual micro. He does not choose to go for it, especially without magfield. That would be tough. The Hellions are going to get jumped on. Hellions clear the Zerglings. Cyclones do pretty okay against the Roaches. And right now, the Cyclones and the Hellions take up their natural state, which is, of course, that one small fast kid who was an absolute shithead. The Roaches and the Ravages are the fat kids, and he's running around calling them names. He's like, you're fat, you're ugly, you're fat, you're ugly, no one likes you, no one likes you. <laughs> That's the job of the Cyclone and the Hellion. Roaches, Ravages can never really catch up with them. Even the Zerglings, which are the athletic kids that actually aren't pieces of crap, they get killed by the Blue Flame Hellions, unfortunately. The Cyclone Hellion can just run around for days. Look at this. They just, they lead them off to the corner of the map, and they're like, eh, see, you don't want to be. Uh, <laughs> they stick the finger up over their thing. I believe, do we still have Stiffy alive, by the way? I don't think, I think Stiffy died, guys. There is a three kill Cyclone there, but I think Stiffy died. We're going to call the highest kill Cyclone is Stiffy. Stiffy's like Batman. 
you know, there, there's different Batmans. It's not about it's just one guy. He's a symbol. He's a symbol. And Stiffy there is going to be able to run away. Three kills still. They managed to snipe the hatchery with the mass lock on. Zergling flanks coming in, though. Zergling flanks get it. Oh, no. There's no Hellions left. There's only one Hellion to help clear these Zerglings. That allows the Roaches to get on top. And oh, no. They're all taking damage right now. Stiffy is still alive there. Five kills on this Stiffy right now. But there we go. Three Cyclones and Alien are going to try and pull back. He's got to get behind the planetary. He's only got a few Cyclones, but he's very wounded. Florencio is still just massing Cyclones. He's got two Starports up, so maybe getting ready for that Battlecruiser transition. He's not there just yet. And look at this, guys. Banes, Roaches, Ravages. It's a big army. This planetary is already very wounded. It's already taken a couple hundred hit points of damage. And I think Roy's going for the bus. There we go. Oh, he pulls the Banelings back so the Roaches can tank for it. Oh, no. This is going to be hard to hold on to. The SCVs try to repair, but the Zerg Things come in on the Cyclones as well, absorbing a lot of that damage. And that third base gets annihilated. Florencio in big trouble. He's still got the Scenic crew standing out front his natural. He is still not giving them extra orders. But now he has a very oversaturated natural. He starved for gas and he still didn't put guys on his natural gas geyser. Oh no, Florencio has been on three gas this whole time. He's up against the Zerg on 82 drones. Now on the plus side, Roy froze up. He didn't replace this hatchery. He was actually tilted from losing that hatch. Does though, look at this. The moment he does think about it, builds three bases and gases everywhere. How are you ever going to beat this guy? Florencio is stuck on two base right now. He's trying to swap into speed banshees with Cloak. He's going to do a runaround on the top side of the map. Once again, I told you guys, Roy there, you can tell as an F2 Zerg, does not notice this army coming in. Florencio says, eh, you got to protect your base, dickhead. And just dips into his opponent's lunchbox, gets one hatchery. If he can, if he can lock onto this, lock onto this. Oh no, Florencio, he didn't micro. Ah, he, he let them lock onto the Zerglings. He could have killed that hatchery as well. Would have been much more valuable than killing 12 Zerglings there. It is what it is, though. He does lose those Cyclones. Gets a hatchery. But guys, it's an 88 drone Zerg. Look at the income, dude. It's still even after losing all these bases. And he's going to have one, two, three hatcheries pop right back up. One thing Roy's struggling with is replacing the hatcheries. And you can see, because he built drones here, it's blocked him from rebuilding that. That's something you got to be careful with. Always rebuild the base before using the lava that's left over. Or you do block yourself from rebuilding your own hatchery. Uh, five Vipers on the way, which hard counters Cyclones and Hellions. And it also kind of counters Banshees with Parasitic Bomb. The question is, will he have Overseers with it? He does have one Overseer here. And he's got Overlord Speed as well, which means it can keep up with those Banshees. It's going to be really hard for Flo. He is so far behind against this 230 APM tryhard, adding an Ultra Cavern re-droning these bases up at 90 workers. Florencio is trying to build tanks now as a unit that can kind of scale and get it back in this game. Hellions are going to find the drone transfer. Once again, the Zerg army is just sitting in a corner of the map. Roy's actually playing so well, but you'd think after getting hit by surprising Hellion Cyclone counterattacks all game, you'd leave some units at home for defense or split your army. But you can see the, the nature of the F2 Zerg. He just kind of grabs the whole army, F2s it from one side of the map to the other. And this tells us Florencio could run out the top side of the map. And what's the bet? Roy would be on the wrong side. That being said, this base is out there. Lift, 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 lift. Flo, 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 Flo. Okay, Flo does lift off. He's got two tanks on the high ground. They definitely want to live up to the mythology of Sergeant Chad Hammer, the high ground siege tank that gets, you know, 50 to 60 kills every game. He's actually messed up his uh, wall, so this tank couldn't get out. So he just sieges it in the back of his base. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's got a lot of Banshees building up. It's all about the Banshees, but this Corrupt is already building. Roy's already got them, but he does not see these Banshees because they are invisible. As I say, he sees the Banshees. You're kidding me. Oh, okay, so Florencio is like, fine, I'll just try and kill this army, get as many units as I can. But look at the bank for Roy. Roy can rebuild this army easily. Remember, there's five Vipers as well. If those Vipers... Yeah, they've got enough energy. They could just drop five parasitic bombs. And unless Florencio has the splits of the gods, he's going to lose all of these banshees. The, the vipers do throw out one parasitic bomb, but only one very conservative. The splits of the gods! The micro is incredible. Next level micro from Florencio there. He manages to let that parasitic bomb hit every single banshee deep into the red. <laughs> I was like, if he drops five parasitic bombs, Florencio is going to need the splits of the gods. Guys, apparently... Apparently, if you drop one, Florencio needs the splits of the gods. One of the bands, she does get killed by the Corruptors. He's going to have to pull back and repair is Florencio. I'd like to see him deactivate Cloak as well to conserve what energy he's got left. He doesn't have a lot of things that shoot up right now. And he does pull back for that mass repair. There we go. Those Banshees will get touched up. Plus three range, plus two carapace, uh, and a bollock synthesis and kindness plating coming in. That's the Ultra Risk upgrades. And guys, the Zerg has the whole map. This is game over. 
Florencio, you put up a valiant effort with your Banshees, your Cyclones running around, but I mean, killing a hatchery that was building, killing a few Ravagers, that's just not enough. Yeah, you've been even less efficient than the opponent because of the, the command centers they snipe. The Banshee's gonna run around the top side once again. Roy, not learning from always having the army out of position, is once again gonna have the army completely out of position. The Vipers are down in the bottom side though. Two Banshees do come in. Queen and the Overseer will get overwhelmed, but it's the Banshees in the top. This is where Florencio needs to find the Damage. He needs to not just get damage. I said Damage for a reason. Damage is when it's real damage. I'm talking fancy damage. I'm talking the sort of damage that gets you back into a game when you've been on two bases versus five to six base Zerg for the last four minutes. This is, this is, these Banshees need to kill a lot of stuff. Now we, we obviously had Steve the Stiffy earlier. I think these Banshees are just absolutely uh, abominable for Roy Gogo, who, who is just F2ing the whole army after them. But the Overseer and the Corruptors don't seem to be on a different control group. So what, what Florencio should be doing here, maybe get some Hellion run bys going again. Because I, I, I think maybe you could do damage. I mean, the Banshees survive for now. They do hide in the corner of the map. But look at the upgrades as well. 3, 2, 90 workers. You've got base mining. Yes, that got sniped, but it's rebuilding. Doesn't rebuild this base. I think that was meant to be a hatchery. Cancel that, buddy. Yeah. Got a base mining here as well. Roy's still banking a vast amount of resources, even though most of these drones are just long distance mining. And Flo, what's he got? He's got a few tanks. He's going to get a planetary and some tanks up on his third. So... Maybe he can just defend this third base, but a lot of his Cyclones are still stuck up in his main. And, I don't know, I think maybe Battlecruiser swap? But there's already Corruptors out. It's, it's hard to say. I don't know what you would do. Widow Mines, actually. Widow Mines has got to be the play, right? Widow Mines and Battlecruisers, because those are units that can scale really well, lure them into that. But Florencio just doesn't have the money for it, so he needs to secure the mining on his third for a few minutes before he can think about a tech switch. He does cancel another hatchery. He's going to take out that Spore Crawler, which is cute. Loses a Banshee for it. Does start doing some more. And Roy actually walks right through the tank fire. Ooh, pretty good fight for Florencio to start off. Only one Baneling connects with the army. And mass SCV repair pool. Oh, that's so cute. Blinding clouds do go down on the tanks, but the Cyclones are still going to be able to do their damage as well the Planetary. And all you've got is like six Ravagers shooting. There's no damage in this fight for Roy. Roy loses one Viper, two Viper. Every Ravager, the Hydras do not have upgrades. Roy started building on upgraded Hydras. He's broken. Guys, the Banshees have actually broken him. He's massing Hydralisks. He doesn't have Groove Spines. He does not have Groove Spines. He doesn't have any of those Hydra upgrades. Where is it? The Hydra Den is here. He has not started any Hydra upgrades. Florencio, just by being annoying with Banshees against the guy who is infinitely ahead of him and has no business losing this game, Florencio is actually getting him to do completely nonsense dumb shit. He's building Hydras and Queens. He, he, I mean, Hydras aren't bad here. Hydras and Vipers beat everything Florencio has because you can just abduct these units in and just kill them. But you need to get those Hydra upgrades. Otherwise, they're so slow. They've only got five range. They should have six. Their movement speed is about half of what it should be. Yes, I'm exaggerated. I don't know what it is, like 30% boost, something like that. It's a pretty big boost, especially off creep. It's massive. It's not a big boost on creep, but it's massive on... Um, Actually, it is pretty big on creep. They look really awkward. Maybe they changed that. Yeah, they still look really awkward even on creep. So maybe it does affect them in both scenarios. 31 Hydras. Oh, no, he remembered. Damn it. Florencio took his foot off the pedal with the Banshees and the, and the Hellions and the Cyclones. And his opponents remembered to make the Hydra upgrades. And that might spell disaster for Flo. He's just building mass Cyclone right now. I don't know how you beat this army. There's Lurker upgrades coming in as well, which will be very good at killing Cyclones. Even though Cyclones can technically outrange them. It takes really fancy micro, and in a big fight, you're trying to run in and lock in, you're going to lose half of your Cyclones to uh, to actually get those lock-ons off. So if Lurkers come out, that could cause a problem. The Cyclones are running down at the bottom. Banshee's in the top. I told you guys, attack two places at once. Roy does not have the abilities, the faculties to deal with it. Obviously, he could just split the Corruptor Viper to deal with the Banshees, but that would involve splitting the army up. Roy is an F2 Zerg. F2 Zerg don't know how to split their army. They only know one mode of micro. F2 A move. Look at this. The Corruptor's leading the charge and the Vipers. You don't want to throw these units away. The Cyclones could pick those Vipers off so easily. Abducts would be really nice. And there we go. One Cyclone gets abducted. The Banshee's going to go in and do more damage, though. Once again, Roy finds the army oh, down in the random corner of the map. Siege. Needs to get back to a central position to be able to defend. But Roy losing another hatchery. is going to try and defend with just spores. That's enough Banshees that they can easily overwhelm one or two spore crawlers. Cyclones and the Hellions are going to run in and try to gun, gun down some of these Hydras. The much larger Hydra army running away from a handful of Cyclone and Hellion always makes me giggle. Banshees come in. As I said, they kill one spore. Now the whole army's lured over here. If they kill that hatchery and run away, that'll be huge. This hatchery is going to fall so quickly. And, ooh, looks like two Banshees did go down. But they pull back the Cyclone Alien running. And guys, Florencio 
Yes, he's got a third base mining a little bit. He's got some tanks, but he's still so far behind. There's 5,000 minerals, 4,500 gas. But Roy Gogo is literally just being... He's like, why you not just die? Re oh my god, are you going to actually attack into a planetary tank? With just Hydras like this, if Florencio turns his Cyclones around, easiest hold of his life. The Hydra's taking an awful engagement. Oh my god. And the Banshee's up there killing Atri while anti-air units move right past them. I have never seen a Zerg shit the bed as hard as Roy Gogo -Go right now, guys. We are literally watching uh, Florencio in this scenario. is a, a hundred, He's like literally a 55 kilogram man. I don't know what that is, like 120 pounds. In, in American Freedom Unit, something like that. Up against a, a giant fucking absolute bodybuilder of a Zerg. And the bodybuilder Zerg, Roy, is getting intimidated. Florencio's like, yeah, you want to fucking go, bitch? And he's like, literally, he's five foot four. He, he weighs, like I said, about 120 pounds. The other guy's easily over 230 of pure muscle. And yet, for some reason, he's afraid. Look at this. He runs his Vipers in. Blinding Cloud Cyclones, which of course does nothing because their lock-on still works. Loses the Vipers. The Hydra's here. Oh, the Lurker's here. Okay, okay. As Roy finally deciding to strike back because so far it's been Florencio, the small guy, kicking him in the groin repeatedly for the last eight minutes. And, and for some reason, Roy's just been cowering and taking it. But Roy has so much money and has a better army. No, Floor with the move command. Oh no, he loses a few cyclones there. Not the best fight, fam. That being said, oh, he can blast this army. Scan, 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 scan and fight, scan and fight. Scan and fight, Flo. Oh my God. Guys, Flo builds planetaries. He doesn't build orbitals. Does he not have detection? He's got two orbitals in the main. He only has one scan available. He can't detect the lurkers properly. He's trying to build turrets at home because he knows he doesn't have enough detection. He's splitting off some Cyclone Alien. He's going to run north. Once again, Roy's army off in the corner of the map. The exact same thing. He never resets after winning a fight. He just leaves his army at a corner of the map. He's so tilted. He's like, I put punch you once now. Sit down, little guy. Florencio is like, uh, how about eat a dick? Runs in, snipes a hatchery instantly. Roy's gonna pull the trigger and try to base trade this, but that means he's going into tank planetary. The Lings do actually absorb some first round hits, the Lurkers, and even Ultra is coming in. They're gonna bust this base. Now remember, Sergeant Chathammer, these two Sergeant Chathammer wannabes on the high ground are already starting to fire. This is gonna go full base trade. Florencio's running in for the base trade. For some reason, Roy is building drones. Roy on like 90 workers just a few seconds ago is building drones when all you need is, is like a few you lurk as a pack of units to defend these cyclones. It doesn't have to be a full base trade. But right now, oh my god, these two tanks! The whole army's running into a double planetary. Two tanks on the high ground. If only Florencio got that tank back and raised the wall. Dude, no, 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 get these tanks back. Florencio is not microing at all. Oh no, dude, 11 kills, 9 kills. Almost all of them are lurkers and hydras. But because he doesn't raise the wall, that ultra does end up getting high ground vision and he lets every single lurker in. Imagine if he just had some tank siege there. Oh no, Florencio actually could have held on to his production in this army. Nonetheless, though, it's not over till it's over because he is going in and smashing 15 hydras are building. The cyclones are killing everything. The buildings have been forced to lift. Florencio still will have detection. And guys, he's got 17 cyclones out right now. Oh, don't lose cyclones to broodlings, though. His units are so fragile. Gets another hatchery there. He's got to try and stop all these hydras popping out and gathering up because they're going to be popping up in the main. That's a lot of hydras. And that might be enough to fight these cyclones head on. He's got to isolate the lurkers and the hydras from each other. And there's even an ultra so what he's going to have to do in the fight is manually do like three or four lock-ons to the Ultra to kill it really quickly. Um, oh, here we go. This is a really important fight. Florencio gets some lock-ons, but he's got a kite. Okay, he loses one, two, three cyclones already do go down. A bunch of the Lings and the Hydras fall as well. Look at that. There we go. As I said, he's got to manually lock onto that, guys. He's only done a single lock-on. There we go. He does get some more lock-ons, but he loses a cyclone for it. Cyclones can beat Hydras. The Hydras always get attacks in for return as well. And here we go. Oh, he's got to be careful. Where's, where's, the, where's the scan? Oh no, he locked onto the Overlords, not the Lurkers. Dude, his army is so fragile. He technically can like lock on, barely get hit, pull back. If only he had some repair or something like that. And you know what else? A few Banshees. Because if he kills these Hydras, Roy is completely out of money. If he can kill these Hydras and get some Banshees out, that'd be huge. But he didn't manage to lift his starports. He only lifted his factories. No, Lorenzo runs in. Loses another Cyclone. He's down to just 11. And he takes even more damage on them. He's got to be careful of those Lurkers. I still think he can win this game. Um, because he's got scans available, but look, whenever he lands these, they become vulnerable, and that's a big issue. Oh, he finds the lurkers, catching them out of the ground is huge. He's just got to pull back, pull back. Don't die to them. Don't die to them when they burrow. Oh, he gets four lurkers there. That's massive. Okay, he's going to land that one. He's going to try and catch these guys. You got to be really careful. If Roy quickly burrows, he could get a few hits off. Oh, he gets one, two, three, four, five cyclones just went down. 
Florencio, I told you guys, you've got to be so fragile. Because I think it's like 7 cast range or 8 cast range for the lock-on. And obviously the lurker is 10 range. So the way you have to do it is you need to send in like a bait. What you do is if you're engaging here, you send a, a cyclone off on an angle to drag their ta attacks away. And then your other cyclones run in, lock on, and then you pull back out of range before the lurkers can change targets. It's super advanced, Micro. And he does get a hatchery. So that's the last hatchery. Back to long distance mining for Roy. Still 31 drones long distance mining versus no mining for Flo, though. Definitely a problem for him. Lurker there. Oh man, these Cyclones, though, losing those like five, six Cyclones to those two guys may have lost in this game. Guys, there's only these Lurkers out. It's and, and Roy's actually made Mass Lurker, which is a very immobile unit, and he runs in again. Oh my god, he just lost three Cyclones, or two Cyclones, almost lost the third one. Florencio Cyclone versus Lurker Micro. <laughs> it's not quite there. Oh man, I, I do hope Flo, I know Flo is going to watch this though, and I, I'd love to see him play this style again. If he run, if he ends up in this interaction again, you guys definitely want to try it. You always just like, I do this a lot in ZBZ where you run Zerglings off on an angle and it's so, so, so much fun to do because the Lurker, you can't dodge Siege Tank shots, but with the Lurker, you can dodge their shots and it's so much fun. And, oh no, he runs in. He runs in. He just lost two more Cyclones to that line. Last lurker there, and he's gonna have to tap. He says, "Well played, guys." Florencia was on two base versus five base for five minutes. He had so many thousands less resources, and yet at the end of this game, somehow he gets the Zerg down to almost no money, almost no army, almost loses the game. Florencio's ability to frustrate and make someone play below, below their level. To make them transition into unupgraded hydras. Was it a 17 minute unupgraded hydra transition? I didn't check the timing. It must have been something like that. Absolutely knows no bounds. And these incredibly good fast Zerg macro players. Well, there's, there's, there's good solid fundamentals. And then there's dealing with the sewer mermaid. And those are two very different skill sets. Thank you for watching this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. The link's down below in the description. If you want to go above and beyond to support us. It's a big part of keeping the channel and the content rolling. As YouTube ads, of course, do not really pay the bills too much. Big thanks, though, to those of you who are so bloody generous, especially our Dicktown Express conductors, Max and Jacob G, Colonel SC, and of course, our big old Leviathan, Modern Totem. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next episode of the Florencio Files. Goodbye and good night.